All right, so let's look at our quiz review for sections 2, 3 through Q6. The half-life, that's important, the half-life, of a certain radioactive substance is 40 days. 75 grams of the substance are present initially. Find the exponential model. All right, so if it's an exponential model, it's probably going to be that y equals a times b to the x value. All right, so y equals, a is always my initial amount, that's uh, 75 grams. My b is always my growth factor, and because it's half-life, my growth factor is 0.5. And x is the time, and there's 40 days in a half-life, but I also have to think about, well, what's my total number of days? So it's going to be total number of days divided by 40. That will give me my number of half-life periods that I would want that half-life raised to. All right. How much of the substance will be present in 60 days? So 60 days is going to be my T. I'm going to show my work. I like to do that on a quiz so that if I get something wrong, I can maybe get partial credit because I've shown my work. So 75 is my starting amount, 0.5 for a half-life. And how many half-lives am I going to have? I'm going to have 60 divided by 40 because 60 is the total and 40 is how many um, days are in a half-life. So I'm going to move to my calculator now. All right, so as I type this into my calculator, um, 75 and in parentheses the 0.5, I want to talk a little bit about that exponent. Um, some of you, when you hit the caret button, yours does not move up like this. It simply shows you the caret. And if that's the case, when you do your exponent and it's a fraction, you have to protect that fraction with parentheses. 60 divided by 40. Otherwise, it will raise it to the 60th power and then take the whole answer and divide by 40 because that's order of operations. So if um, your calculator does not move up here for the exponent, you have to have those parentheses. And let's go ahead and round to two decimal places. So we would have 26.5. That one would get bumped up because of the six. So 26.52 grams. All right, so I got 26.52 grams. All right, I'm going to move down to number two. Suppose an object was thrown upward from a cliff on the surface of Mars, and observations were recorded in the following table. All right, so I've got time and I've got height. So time is my x, that's my independent. I like to get in the habit of labeling that. You are going to be having a project coming up, and this is one of the things you always have to do is um, label the independent and dependent. So that's why I've tried to get into the habit of doing that. And it says, um, fit a quadratic model to the data. Well, anytime I'm given a table and asked to um, create a model, whether it's linear, exponential, or quadratic, what I need to do is go to my calculator and enter this data into STAT on the calculator. All right, so I went to STAT and edit. I entered my data into the calculator, and now I'm going to go to STAT and CALC and choose quadratic regression, which is number five. I can either hit the five on the calculator or I can arrow down to it. There's another way to do it. I enter and I need to ask it to calculate. Some of you don't have this screen and yours just simply says calculate and you just have to hit enter one more time. And it asks me to round to three decimal places. So A is going to be negative 1.38, 0. I'll just put 0 there as a placeholder. And then my B value is going to be 6. Point, well, that 6 is going to bump the 9 to a 10, which is going to bump that 0 next to the 9 to a 1. So I'm actually going to get 6.210 for my B value. And for my C value, I'm going to have 91.607. That 5 is going to bump the 6 to a 7. And I want you to notice the R squared value. It's very high. 
which means this is a good fit. This quadratic model is a good fit for the data. All right, so I wrote down my quadratic model as we were looking at it from the calculator. Just want to remind myself that x is time um, and y is height. So then it asks, what is the highest point the object reaches? All right, I've got a couple um, choices here. I can put this equation into y equals, or I can find the x value by using that x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. And once I find that x value, I could substitute it in here and here and find the y value, which is the highest point, because height is y, so I'm looking for a y value. Maybe we should write that down, looking for y value, because y is height. I'm looking for the maximum. All right, so this is one way to do it. I thought this time maybe we would use the calculator and give that a try, so we're going to go back to our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to type it into the calculator, which is what I did in y equals, and I hit graph, and that's all I can see. And I have to realize that this is a quadratic that must be going way up here and then coming back and so obviously the fact that I can't see it coming back down, I need to extend the x value or the x max to a higher number. I definitely can't see that y value, so I need to extend that up higher as well. And I realize from my equation that my y-intercept is 91.607, so I'm definitely going to want my y, my y max is going to have to be higher than that. So I'm going to reestablish my window for my graph. So I'm going to go to second. Actually, I didn't mean we're going to go to second. We don't need second at all. Window is just right there. I'm going to hit window. And I know that I want to extend out my x max. I'm not really sure how much I need to, so let's just try 20. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, but we'll find out. And then I know that my y max has to be higher than 91.607. I want to make sure it's plenty high enough. I'm going to go to 200. Just to guess, and I'm going to hit graph and see if this works better. Oh, look, now I can see where my maximum is, and I want to find this right here. So I'm going to go to second, trace, going to ask for the maximum, hit enter, and it says left bound, so I need to arrow to the left. As long as I'm to the left of that max, I can hit enter. Now I have to be to the right, hit enter. I don't want the guess, so I hit enter again, and according to this, it's going to be at approximately 2.2 to five seconds, my height will be 98.59. So that's going to be my max height, and it's going to take me approximately two and a quarter seconds. Okay, so um, this was the ordered pair, and the highest point was that y value, so it's going to be 98.59, and this is in meters. And then it asks in part C, to the nearest tenth of a second, when will the ball reach the ground? So when it says reach the ground, that's when I'm looking for zeros. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, back to my graph. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my graph. I just hit graph again. And I can see that I've got zeros here and here. And I can tell already that this zero here is going to be negative. And I really don't want um, a negative zero when it comes to throwing a ball up because I threw the ball up right here. It went up and came back down. This zero over here, we don't need. You have to realize the graphing calculator when you put an equation in doesn't know that this is a real life problem. 
It just graphs the quadratic. It doesn't know that our real life problem begins right here and goes to there. And that's it. Just this little part of the quadratic is really the whole part for the own real life scenario that we're looking at. And this is the zero we want. So I'm going to go to second trace. I'm going to find that zero. Right, and I'm going to get a little closer to it. Just I want to be. It, it, I'm definitely to the left. Notice this is the zero. I'm to the left and above. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I've got to move to the right and below. All right, hit enter. Enter again, and there I am at 10.70. Um, I hit the uh, ground, so at about 10.7 seconds. All right, so at about 10.7 seconds, I'm going to hit the ground. All right, let's look at our next um, uh, next uh, question. It says, in a lab experiment on the growth of cicadas, there were 77 cicadas four days after the beginning of the experiment. So at four days, I have 77 cicadas. And 225 after an additional three days. So that would be at seven days, I have 225 cicadas. Well, I'm getting lots of cicadas, aren't I? Assume the cicada population grows exponentially. All right, so that's the information I have. Let's look at the other side of my uh, paper, and it says find an exponential model using the calculator. So I want an exponential model, which means I'm going to enter my data, and my data, remember, was the ordered pair four days, 77 cicadas, and seven days, 225 cicadas. So I'm going to enter that information into my calculator. All right, so I went to stat and edit. I entered my data into list one and list two. Now I'm going to go to stat and calc. And I'm going to go down to choice zero because that is exponential regression. I'm going to hit enter. And I'll go to calculate. And I will have my exponential model. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and round to two decimal places. I don't think it told us what to round to, so I'm going to round to two decimal places. So that would be y equals 18.43 is my a value. My b value would be 1.43 to the x. And notice the r and the r squared value, they're both 1. That means this is a perfect So um, I wrote down my equation that I've gotten from my calculator, and I'm going to go into part B. According to the model, so the model that I wrote right here, that you found on the calculator, what is the initial number of insects? Well, the A value is always my initial amount, and because we're talking about insects here, I want to round this, and that would be approximately 18 insects. And then using the calculator model, how many after 12 days? So 12 days, um, x is my number of days. Notice 4 and 7 were my number of days. So 12 is going to be my number of days. So I'm going to do y equals 18.43 times 1.43 to the 12th power. Put that in my calculator. So I went ahead and I typed this into the calculator, and I get um, 
Let's see, 1,347.